Does the God of the Bible care at all about women's consent? I submit that he does not. Not just because we can read the narratives that are in the book, but also because he listed laws specifically on what to do with women. One very interesting narrative that we can kick this topic off with comes from Joshua 15. And I think this is very characteristic of how women are viewed both by the biblical authors and even by God. This is about Caleb offering his daughter off as a prize. He says, I will give my daughter Aksa in marriage to the man who attacks and captures Kiriath Sefer. Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it. So Caleb gave his daughter Aksa in marriage to him. That's really interesting that in this particular narrative, one of God's righteous people thinks that his daughter is no more than just a prize to be given away to whoever the most valiant warrior might be. It's quite concerning that this type of behavior happens over and over again in the Old Testament, and never once does God actually reprimand these people. In fact, he seems to go out of his way to constantly violate the consent of women himself. Here's one clear example from Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy 21, 10 through 13, when you go out to war against your enemies and the Lord your God hands them over to you and you take them captive, suppose you see among the captives a beautiful woman whom you desire and want to marry. So you will bring her to your house. She will shave her head and clip her nails, discard her captive's clothing, and remain in your house a full month mourning for her father and mother. After that, you may go into her, and she will be your wife, and you will be her husband. So here he's encouraging them to take captive brides from war. Rather than just letting them go back home and rebuild their communities and let them be, saying, no, it's not good enough that you killed their father, that you killed their brothers, that you massacred the people that lived there, probably killed their children. No, you can take the pretty virgins for yourself and you can make them wives against their own consent after a mere 30 days of mourning their dead mother and father. That to me is barbarism. But it doesn't get much better. If that's not bad enough, God himself declares that he is going to cause women to be violated. There's a very interesting narrative in 2 Samuel chapter 12. This is when David is being reprimanded for the sin that he did by sending Uriah the Hittite to be struck down at the, the beginning of the war when he was supposed to be sent to the front lines. He did this, obviously, so that he would die in battle and he could take Bathsheba for himself. The prophet comes to him with a reprimand from Yahweh, and there's two very interesting snippets in here, and I want you to pay very close attention to this. This is 2 Samuel 12, verse 8. He starts out by reprimanding David, saying, I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and all Judah. And if all that had been too little, I would have given you even more. So the reprimand starts by Yahweh admitting that he gave the wives of Saul into David's arms. Did any of them have consent over this? No, no, they didn't. Now it's going to get worse. And I know some of you are bristling right now saying, well, surely they would have wanted to go with David as opposed to be, you know, left to their own or divorced or whatever, you know, what can you do as a member of the harem? Well, unfortunately, God takes it one step further. If we go down to verse 11, he says, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he will lie with your wives in broad daylight. For you did it in secret, but I will do this thing before all Israel in the broad daylight. God himself is punishing David by violating David's wives. One must wonder what the status of women must have been like in the eyes of Yahweh when he's willing to allow them to be sexually assaulted merely to punish David. This, to me, is an absolute barbaric God. And you might think that this is a one-time occurrence, but it's not. Happens over and over again. When the Israelites act up and God threatens to send them into captivity, it's often accompanied with visions of being so distraught in war that they're going to have to eat their own children, so on and so forth. And he says this as a threat in Jeremiah chapter 8, 
verses 9 and 10. Since they have rejected the word of the Lord, what kind of wisdom do they have? Therefore, I will give their wives to other men and their fields to new owners. And this type of nonsense goes on and on through the prophets where God says, fine, you don't want to listen to me. I'm going to allow others to come in and take your lands, take you captive, and ravish your wives before your very eyes. That, to me, is not a God that actually cares about women. If he's using the women to punish the men for their misdeeds, that is not a God that believes women are equal to people. And certainly not a God who thinks women should have any amount of consent. In fact, it seems quite clear from the Old Testament that women were basically property and their value as property were wrapped up in the fact that they would or would not be virgins. And this is quite clear through the Old Testament text. You can see that it's always the virgins who actually have value. Let's look at a very interesting passage from Numbers 31. In this particular passage, Moses is upset that some of the men who went out to war against the Midianites did not kill all of them, but he allowed the women and children to live. Moses is upset with this. Yahweh is upset with this. He says, Have you allowed the women to live? And he asked them, They are the ones who followed Balaam's advice and enticed the Israelites to be unfaithful to the Lord in the Peor incident, so that a plague struck the Lord's people. Now, kill all of the boys, kill every woman who has slept with a man, but save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. And then Yahweh, if you read the rest of the passage, actually confirms that this is indeed what he wants to happen. So Moses got this word from Yahweh. It's bad enough that they killed all of the children. What is the point in preserving just the young virgin women? Obviously, we know. Young virgin women were just captives. They were just property. They were spoils of war and nothing more. Uh, Women's consent Uh, Women's status as human beings really did not matter. That's why, of course, we see elsewhere in the Old Testament, there's really no right of divorce for women. There's no way for them to participate in the covenant. Um, The men had to get circumcised. There's actually no regulation for what women needed to do. There was no way for them to actually demonstrate they were part of the covenant community. Genesis 3.16, after the fall, God says, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, but he will rule over you. Boy, what a loving picture God has painted for women to be with their husbands, that they're going to desire to be with them, but the men are just going to rule over them. It's also interesting that men can have multiple wives. We see that in Deuteronomy 21.15, Exodus 21.10. But nowhere in the Old Testament ever does it ever say that women are going to be allowed to have multiple husbands. Isn't that strange that men can have multiple wives, but women cannot have multiple husbands? We see something also quite interesting in Exodus 21. It says, when a man sells his daughter as a slave, she shall not go out as the male slaves do. But if she does not please her master who has designated her for himself, then he will let her be redeemed. Very interesting. You can literally just sell your daughter as a slave and she will become a concubine. The passage actually just implicitly understood that if you sell your daughter as a slave, that it is the slave owner's prerogative to make that daughter a concubine. Absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. These are not laws that in any way we would want to live by in modern society. And I'm baffled that any Christian is picking up their Bible, they're reading these passages, and they're saying, this is the God I want to worship. This is a God who gives good, moral, objective laws. Now, I know what some of you are saying. Well, obviously, we're not under the law of Moses. And that may or may not be true. That's really a question of a theological viewpoint. Whether or not you're under the law of Moses, though, you have to question, what is the nature of the God that gave these commandments? 
whether they were temporary or whether they were permanent commandments, are these good commandments? Are these moral commandments? Are these objectively good? I think everyone knows the answer to that. And the answer is, of course not. They're really not. And the New Testament's not much better. Listen to the words of Paul. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. And he goes on to talk about women in 1 Corinthians 14, 18. Wives, be subject to your husbands as it is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Really interesting here how women seem to be, even in the New Testament, subservient to men. There's never a spot in the Bible where God or any of God's messages from Paul or through Jesus ever actually allow women to have the right of consent. Even in the book of Corinthians in chapter 7, when it talks about how men and women should not refrain from having marital relationships with each other so that they won't be tempted, it's still assumed that the woman does not have the right of consent. She doesn't have the ability to just say no. Her body's is her husband's. Anyways, there's more that could be said on this particular topic, and I know there's apologists in the comments right now shouting Bible verses at me that I didn't read during this video, and I'll make a second video if I need to. The fact of the matter is, throughout the Bible, women's consent does simply not matter. The God of the Bible thinks women are property, and maybe not much more than that. Maybe not much more. They're bought and sold as property. Every time marriage is mentioned in the Bible, it refers to men taking wives and wives being given. And then, of course, there's always the bride price. Because when you bought a piece of property, whether it was a cattle or whether it was a woman, you had to pay the price for it. Anyways, if you think I missed something, if you just want to cuss at me in the comments, that's fine. You're welcome to do so. Uh, that's my piece on women and whether or not they actually have consent in the Bible. I don't think they do.